We're going to tie this rusty spinner. It's in, it's in the style of that, that deer hair coffin fly I tied a while back. I'll put a, a link at the top or something. But uh, it's, it's like the, the spinning banshee style, which is essentially one clump of deer hair for the wing and the wing case and the head. The head is like an elk hair caddis head. Uh, so but this is a lot smaller than that coffin, obviously. That was the first time you're trying this technique. I would probably do the coffin first, only because it's a lot easier to tie a bigger one. These small ones can be a little finicky, and it's really tough to make them perfect, but if you get used to it, it can, it can look pretty decent. All right, let's get started. The thread I'm using is this Rusty Brown 8-0. And pretty much just like every fly, I never start at the eye. So about an eye's length back. I forgot to tell you what hook I was using here. I'm using the 1280, size 14. This is like the length of a 12 with the gap of a 14. And I would say this hook or a regular 12 or a regular 14, that's where you want to be on a, on a Rusty Spinner or Hendrickson in general. That's a Daiichi. And the tail we're putting on here is this Coq de Leon. And this is a two-tail fly, so I would just try and use an even amount of, of fibers. Yeah, it just makes life easy. Maybe, maybe a little bit longer than the than the hook. And you use an even amount because if you want to split them, you can, and they It doesn't really make a difference if if. They're not split evenly, but if you want to get crazy, it is just a rusty spinner, so you don't have to get crazy. But some people like to like to get crazy. So if you grab one side and just throw one turn and really pull it towards you, it's gonna see what up. Dubbing I'm using here is this this beaver dubbing, and uh, this is made by John Bonacera. And, uh, you know, when you got some good beaver dubbing, there's not many guard hairs. That's, that's what you want. You want that for a dry fly dubbing, at least. If, you, if you're looking for a rough a dubbing, so essentially a hair's ear, that's what you really want if you want a rough dubbing. But, yeah, that would have the guard hairs in it. Some people like the guard hairs. Some people don't. But on a dry fly, you really shouldn't have guard hairs. We're putting this on pretty thin. Actually, I'm going to cut this down a hair. Now, we remember, we got to be, we got to leave a good amount of room because we're putting deer hair on. So just keep it thin. Uh, deer hair, you can use whatever you want, you know, that bright white or fluorescent white, whatever they want to call it, it's just absolutely pure white. You can use that, or you can use a natural white, which is from the, the belly of a deer hair. Either one is fine, but I, I have to say, you got to use something long. If it's not long, you're going to have a problem. So you can see how long this stuff is. It seems a little ridiculous, right, but you need something to work with, so use the long stuff. You don't need, need much. Some in this, in this uh, deer hair stack are ready to go here. And yeah. now don't forget. Now I don't know if you saw that, but I I pulled out this 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 cut end right here. See that? And you can do that pretty easily. It seems crazy, but you can just grab the end right here and loosely pull. And you should be able to grab the cut end, even though you're grabbing the whole thing, because it's bigger than all the rest. And I pulled out one extra one, which I threw back in, but if you see a cut end, just loosely 
run your fingers through it and I bet you you grab it. It's, it's probably three or four times as thick as these tips. So your fingers just naturally want to just latch onto it because it's longer. We need about a hook. Remember, you have to you have to make a thorax, so that's going to take up some of the wing length. So don't make it too short. And when you turn these on, don't try and compress it all in the first turn. Just kind of run it up and crank on it. Each one crank. You can do one turn basically in front of the other one. One turn on top of another one really doesn't doesn't do anything for you. There's very little for deer hair. You you want to be compressing the deer hair, which doesn't happen unless you're on the deer hair. And I put some turns in here, sort of like posting it, but not really. It's really just to lock it in. We bring it back. Now we have all this and um what I like to do is is grab most of it, cut it close, check the bottom too. You don't you don't you don't really want the deer hair that's rolled onto the side. That's not gonna create a good thorax cover. You really just want it on top. You don't need much. You need pretty much the same amount as the coffin, honestly. Any of the short ones, get rid of those because they're just going to make a mess. Then what you can do is, just double check that all the ones that you have were on the top. Yeah. Then what you can do is you can get a razor blade. And see how it's a little bit short there? You know, it's it's um it's not close enough. I mean, if you come in with a razor blade, you can really get it close, and that'll help you. Just be careful. Yeah, I think that's all right. So now we bring this thread back, and you can put like one or two turns into those cut ends. I just put three in. Make sure those butts are close. <laughs> you can clean it up with the, uh, with the dubbing though. Bring these butt ends up. Put a couple turns in here. Get your dubbing again. for back here. You're going to go behind it. And then in front some more dubbing. Now what you're, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to cover up the cut ends and the thread. So make sure you keep an eye on both sides. If you see some white coming through, it can really, I mean, it's, when it comes through, it shows, so, just, you can go back, just try and keep it thin. Yeah, I think that's alright. So maybe I should talk about this for a second. These are Astra, that's the company, here's the little box. Comes in a, a bigger box, and is a hundred in, is a hundred of these blades, which is, they're two sides, so it's really like two hundred. You can get them on Amazon for like less than eight bucks. 
And I would say, without a doubt, this is a good idea to, to pick these up. Very cheap. And then what I do is I take it, while it's still in the package, I fold it over and break it. See that? And then I rip it in half. So what that does is that gives me two, two razor blades and they're both still in the packages. So I can put this down on my desk and not have to worry. Also, I know now the one that I'm, uh, I'm using is out of the package, obviously. And the one that's brand new is in the package. Now, since this thing is brand new, this is sharp. I mean, I, I just, I don't know if you saw that, but it just popped right off because of how sharp it is when it's brand new. Now let's go back to this. Now, um, now what we're going to do is we're going to split the wing, and this is something I've started to do with the coffin as well, uh, just to cover up the thorax a little bit better, make it a little bit easier. It's not that hard with the coffin to split it with just with the deer hair, but this one is is really hard to do that. So, so make sure you got an even spread here. If you look at it from the top, it makes things easier. Then, what I try and do is make sure your dubbing is tight. Go from the, the, the back to the front through the wing. See how I'm grabbing this far wing? One, two. Now you're in front. Then we grab the other wing and we go back two times. One. Make sure it's tight though. If it's not tight, just 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 go back and tighten it up. There it is. There's that second one. Now we we we, we have that now. See that? Now we lift the whole thing up and we go forward. One little one cord in here. I'll just take that off. Make sure there's nothing in front of the eye. Now you got a split wing. The whole thorax is covered up. You can look at the bottom there. It's looking good. Now we take the butt ends and we come through. And if, if 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 you pull them down, there's a couple ways you can do it. If you pull them down real far, you can you can you can bring these wings back and hold them. See that? That's a good method. Make sure it's nice and tight. Keep keep those wings back makes things a lot easier. Then you take some more dubbing, very little. Very little. It's got to be thin. Take a turn. Tighten it up. Look at the bottom. You need another turn, okay? But that's it. Don't go crazy here, because you gotta, you gotta come. You need enough to go forward. Bring this up. Put your turns in. Now, again, I haven't been using head cement on these fishing flies, but if you want to use head cement, go for it. Just put it on the thread before you whip finish. Just put a whole bunch in. And that's it. Now, still the wings are back. This is important because it keeps them out of the way. Grab, see how, see how this long deer hair helps? Grab it. See what I'm doing there? Yeah. And then we, we can cut it pretty close. Yeah, I think that's all right. Now, A little bit of loose dubbing. Yeah, this one was just hanging on. There we go. 
Now, if there's anything the deer hair can really be, it can it can break on you. you. You're doing it very small. The smaller it is, the tighter it is, the easier it is going to break. It's really not that big of a deal. If you want to look, if you, if you want it to be neat, just come in there and trim it. Doesn't make much of a difference though. Yeah. All right, there it is. Pretty easy fly. The smaller ones are can be tougher than than the bigger ones on the you know the coffin. If you want, try that coffin first. Uh, it's a little bit easier. But uh, other than that, um, it's not a bad fly. I mean, it's really it's, it's, use that long deer hair. That's going to help a lot. The long deer hair is going to help. Without a doubt, that's probably the biggest trick I can I can tell you is is use the long deer. Other than that, that's it. That's it. Pretty good little pattern, I think. The the technique uh, technique I think works on on. I mean, you can do them on anything. You can do it on a sulfur. You can do it on a blue wing olive, probably. I mean, as you get real small, you're not going to be able. To, you're not going to be able to do this on a twenty. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be able to do this on twenty. But I would say sixteen. Uh, right, the Cronita, right, that's a 16, and even the Sulphur, that gets around a 16, you could probably do it on a 16 if you get, if you get real good at it. Alright, give it a shot. Thanks.